topic is tailoring anti osteoporotic therapy for optimal bone health. Osteoporosis is the result of osteoclast overactivation and osteoblast down regulation. Osteoporosis constitutes a significant health concern that profoundly affects individuals' quality of life. There is a complex interplay of factors influencing osteoblast function and differentiation. It is a result of uh, We have to address the impairment of osteoblasts in osteoporosis to develop an effective treatment in osteoporosis and regeneration of the robust bone tissue improving quality of life. In updated guidelines of Jan 2023, American College of Physicians, it now recommends preferential use of base phosphonates as the first line therapy in women and men with osteoporosis. Exception is women at very high risk of fracture. In these, romosuzumab or teipiretide can be used followed by base phosphonate. Denosumab I think we'll just take it. No, I do it. What are you doing? No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. So in updated guidelines as of Jan 23, ACP now recommends preferential use of bisphosphonates as first-line therapy in women and men with osteoporosis. Exception is women at very high risk of fracture. In these, romosozumab or teriparidide can be used followed by bisphosphonate. Denosumab is endorsed as a second line therapy for adults with contraindication in those who experience adverse effects from bisphosphonates. Why this is important? Because in the 2017 ACP guidelines, denosumab was a first line therapy and now it is recommended as a second line therapy simply because it has caused some cases of hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia which needed ICU admissions and also were fatal at some time in certain cases. So because of this, denosumab is now pushed to the second line therapy. Now this approach is similar to 2017 guidelines in individualized approach to prescribing uh, bisphosphonates in women older than 65 years with a low bone mass. Also recommends quarterly literature surveillance and updates in the US Preventive Services Task Force, which currently recommends screening osteoporosis in women more than 65 years and also in less than 65 years with increased risk using a clinical assessment tool. So these are the previous guidelines which said that these medications should be used for five years. Now it's down to three years. So osteoporosis was treated initially in women using alendronate, risidronate, zolendronic acid or denosumab, one of these to reduce the risk of hip fractures and vertebral fractures for five years. Currently, we recommend it for three years due to the atypical femoral fractures as pointed out earlier in the subtrochanter region on the lateral side and uh, occasionally osteonecrosis of the jaw. Also recommended bisphosphonates for men with osteoporosis to reduce risk of vertebral fracture. An independent evidence review team performed systematic review and network meta-analysis of osteoporosis treatment that analyzed 34 randomized control trials and 36 observational studies. The review confirmed effectiveness of bisphosphonates in denosumab in reducing hip and vertebral fractures. In older PMO, women with very high risk of fracture initially, teriparatide or abaloparatide, one of the newer molecules, or romosozumab, a WNT sclerostin inhibitor, followed by alendronate is effective in reducing fractures. Adverse effect, again, as I pointed out, is a small absolute risk of atypical femoral fractures and osteonecrosis of the jaw when you use it for more than 36 months. As per, so to summarize, as per AAC and AC guidelines, first line of treatment for most PMO patients at high risk of fracture includes alendronate, residronate, zolendronic acid, or denosumab. For those who cannot use oral therapy, and at high risk of fracture, use teriparatide or denosumab or both together in certain cases which are unresponsive, which are known as the non-responders or zolendronic acid as recommended. So the review treatment also said the data is that on an average, the medical cost 
of treatment for osteoporosis in fatal fall injuries is 637 millions in the US and 31 billion for fatal injuries. So total cost is almost 33 billion. It's almost $30,000 per admission. Now 10 million women had this and women had this in 2018 and the projection is by 2025 it will be more than 25 million. 3 million predicted fractures. So currently as per prevalence, osteoporosis medications in use are bisphosphonates, monoclonal antibody receptor activator of kappa, nuclear capture kappa bilang, that is donosumab, PTH analog, steriparatide and avaloparatide, estrogen agonist antagonist reloxifene and calcitonin. Now the important part for surgeons is how to use it in the perioperative phase. So osteoporotic therapy in perioperative phase of treatment and uh, to minimize the risk of new or recurrent fractures, two important determinants of bone strength are there. One is the femoral stem shear strength and one is the periprosthetic bone mineral density. So perioperative treatment with bisphosphonate and calcitonin improved BMD around stems and increased the implant stability. Bisphosphonate was better than calcitonin. Indomethacin decreased the periprosthetic BMD and implant stability. So using NSAIDs uh, in large proportion postoperatively for a longer period of time is harmful to the stability of the stem because NSAIDs inhibit fracture healing. Next. Efficacy and safety of different anti drugs was analyzed in spinal fusion. So Samir, of course, that is your area. And the network meta-analysis results show that achieving fixation in fusion is difficult secondary to poor bone stock. Administration of perioperative anti agents is widely accepted approach for improving fusion rates. Now we searched five electronic databases, PubMed, MBES, Web of Science, Cochrane Library, and China National Knowledge Infrastructure, CNK1, till November 22. And the criteria for inclusion of the study was compared anti agent versus placebo. Outcomes included fusion rates, osteoporosis, disability index, and dis uh, adverse events. Next. Fracture liaison services is actually the core of this topic. So the topic was framed when you said that tailoring anti osteoporotic medicine. So what is the meaning of tailoring? So there is this uh, additional uh, facility that has been created. It's called fracture liaison services, FLS. Now this keeps a surveillance on your treatment. So this is something we lack and we should start this. So there has to be a surveillance on whatever treatment is provided in every orthopedic department as to its efficacy and results. So all these spinal fusion, instrumentation of hip, knee arthroplasty, hip arthroplasty, these are all cases which are liable to have poor fusion rates or fixation failures, instrumentation failures, or periprosthetic fractures. So there are also diseases like RA, IBD, post-transplantation, metastasis, which also make you prone for high risk of fractures. Next. So the results show that there are 13 randomized controlled trials which are included in the network meta-analysis. Only teriparatide was more effective than placebo in increasing fusion rate. So this terminology called SUKRA, that is surface under the cumulative ranking curve, has been created. If you compare this, teriparatide has the highest SUKRA, that is 90.9%. And uh, uh, denosumab is the next one, 74 Zolodronic acid has 43.7%, alendronate 41%, and acidronate 35%. So you have the efficacy analysis here. Teriparatide plus dinosumab, or teriparatide alone, use is recommended to increase fusion rate and reduce osteoporosis in spinal fusion patients. The R series included about 22, four from China, six from Japan, one from Denmark. So you see it's an international uh, analysis. It's not limited to one country. And uh, there are one study, four studies with TPTD, one with alendronate, three with zolendronic acid, and one of TPTD plus denosumab. So what are the, so let's touch about the new therapies that are going to come in, the cathepsin K inhibitors. Now this currently has been temporarily withdrawn from the market because of uh, high risk of CVA and coronary artery disease. But it was launched with a lot of fanfare, Odana Catev, it reduced bone desorption, maintained bone formation, it reduced uh, type 1 collagen degradation, uh, its uh, time period was less than five years, and there was a large multinational randomized double-blind phase 3 study 
Next. But because of the risk of CVA, it has been temporarily withdrawn from the regulatory approval process. But it is definitely a therapy for the future. Now, there's a clear need for additional therapies for treatment of osteoporosis. When we calculate osteoporosis therapies, we do it in BMU units. Just give me two minutes. 10% of the skeleton is renewed each year. Entire skeleton is replaced every 10 years. Net bone mass should be stable. You must replace the damaged bone. Calcium homeostasis has to be maintained. Cathepsin K is the only cathepsin expressed at high levels in osteoclast. And selective osteoclast stimulation reduces increasing desorption, but does not interfere with bone formation. So now the concept is coming off. Next. So romosozumab, Ivinity. Uh, this is actually the WNT uh, sclerostin inhibitor. It has a uh, very sound anabolic effect of the same level of steriparatide. It can be used in high-risk fractures. Again, you have to be careful because it has increased heart attacks, stroke, and CV death as possible adverse effects. Okay, patients have to be you know, selected correctly. Next, quickly. Abeloparatide is a synthetic peptide analog currently in use for severe cases of osteoporosis. It can be used in intramuscular format, 30 doses, 3 milligram, in a pre-filled pen. Recommended by NICE in 2024. Has the same problems as bisphosphonates. Next. So what is the best and safest treatment? So this is the algorithm. Teriparatide or abeloparatide or denosumab or romososumab for 12 months, but for or 12 months to or three years, followed by alendronate for two to three years. The whole thing should be less than three years. Moderate severity osteoporosis, alendronate weekly for three years, or isidronate weekly for three years. And we all know that alendronate and isidronate are the most cost effective compared to the present medication. The contraindications are less than 18 years. Pregnancy, breastfeeding, severe CKD, and dialysis. This is the list of medicines which are available. Romosozumab is Ivinity, Denosumab is Prolia, Siva, Teriparad, Fortio. We all know that. These are the internationally available molecules. So Denosumab did outperform Lisidonate and Abandonate, but it is a little more expensive. Next. There has to be a balance between osteoblast formation and osteoclast desorption. Next. Now, there are critical controllers and regulators in bone health osteoporosis. The WNT pathway is a critical regulator. Rankel activation of osteoclast is a critical regulator. Inflammatory conditions like RA, which increase osteoclast activity, and IL-6, INF, alpha, and PGA2 levels are critical controllers. And so also genetic factors. Next. Nutritional deficiency, as Dr. Agashe pointed out, that has to be taken care of. Sedentary lifestyle, inflammatory cytokines. Next. The targeting the inflammatory pathways or biological targeting is the next future of uh, treatment. So targeted delivery of bisphosphonates using BP modified nanosystems, composites, nanosystem controlled precision drug delivery systems, bone tissue affinity of bisphosphonates, nanosystems with reversible effect on osteoporotic remodeling. So now what is the problem with osteophile when you're using zolotonic acid? It used to suppress osteoporotic, I mean it would re suppress resorption for 10 years. Now we want drugs which will have a osteoporotic remodeling, reversible, so that the problem can be sorted out if you have an excess of uh, resorption uh, depression. So this osteonecrosis of the jaw and fractures used to occur because of severe control on resorption. And if there is no resorption, there can be no formation. So nanosystem use, that we can slip. So basically there are micelles, there are liposomes, all these are being used as nanosystems. Next. So there are many trials now conducted. 19 clinical trials have already happened in this. Next. So we all use denosumab. It's currently the flavor of the season. And it acts in this way by inhibiting Rankel, mediated activation of osteoclast. It's given every six months in a standard osteoporotic, but in metastasis, it can be given every month also. It's usually given for three years. And these are the facts about denosumab. It is safest in reduced renal function. That is one point I want to point out. And there is reversibility of osteoclast suppression as opposed to bisphosphonates. That is the advantage. Acts within 12 hours. And by two weeks, the activation level is uh, visible. Its reversibility is within 12 months. And uh, next. So there is a trial for that, the freedom trial. You can go through it. Uh, treatment indications are known. Next. It's also very useful in multiple myeloma. Yes, next. And uh, 
soluble resector, uh, kappa V ligand, that is the target area for denosumab. But the only problem it can create is it can lead to hypocalcemia. If, therefore, when you give denosumab, please check the level of vitamin D and calcium in the patient. If they are low, <coughs> don't give it. So you first uh, correct those levels and then give it. Next. Yeah. So after stopping treatment with denosumab, there can be rebound hypercalcemia. Another problem is if you stop suddenly and don't give anything like bisphosphonate, the effect is nullified within a very short period of time, within three months. Next. So this is the efficacy and safety of 18, 18 anti-postoperative drugs. Lumbar spine, alendronate can increase by 5.6, femoral neck 2.3, total lips. So we all know this. We have been using alendronate for ages now. Next. That's the conclusion. So the conclusion, bisphosphonates are effective anti-resorptive agents, and we use them on a large scale. Is they are cost effective because it costs cost less than $200 a year. And uh, so currently, I would only say that the new drugs, Cathepsin K inhibitors, are currently withdrawn, may come back in the future with modification. And there are many drugs in the pipeline which will improve the delivery system of bisphosphonates so that your osteonecrosis and other problems will be reduced. Thank you so much. <laughs>